In the depths of the African jungle live a people who from their first breath struggle to survive. They are known as the Pygmies, one of the most marginalized and primitive groups in the world. With an average life expectancy of 25, they frequently suffer the loss of loved ones, making them very fearful of death. And to this day, the great majority of them are still unaware of the hope and eternal life found in Jesus Christ. How can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? How can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? We know this journey is not for the faint of heart. But here we are, Lord. Send us. Two months after our wedding, Mary and I chose to travel to the war-torn Central African Republic despite expecting our first son. We left our comfort and security to venture into the unknown and the Lord surpassed all our expectations. These are the orphans that lost their parents during the war. We spent time with them and witnessed the hope and joy he gives them despite their circumstances. The Lord opened the doors of nine different high schools to speak to thousands of youth that have been left scarred by the horrors of war. We sow to this generation seeds of hope, repentance, and reconciliation. After a few visits in the prisons, the impossible happened. The prisoners that repented from their sins were allowed to be baptized outside of the prison in the river. We then ventured deep into the jungle, where we encountered 12 pygmy tribes. 177 of them believed and got baptized. Seeing the need for the gospel among them, we were convinced to return the following year. As we set out once again on our mission to the pygmy tribes deep in the jungle, I know that bringing our five-month-old baby is a challenge but I am convinced that it is the right thing to do. By bringing what is most precious to us, I believe it will show them the message we bear is important and worth the sacrifice. This is the first time I am taking the plane in my life. For months, I have been asking for the Lord to send me into the war. And when Timu invited me to come with him to the jungle, I had many fears and doubts. Going to own which tribes? I never thought I would do this, so I don't know what to expect. Not my will be done, but yours, my love. The capital of the Central African Republic, under attack. Dozens of rebel fighters died in combat. Look, these are foreign fighters. This one doesn't even speak French or the local language. He is now in our hands, thanks to the cooperation of the people of the Central African Republic. More than 60,000 residents have already fled the country in fear of the violence. 
The rebels have tried to attack it, but have been repelled by a coalition of UN peacekeepers, Russian soldiers and mercenaries. The last French soldiers deployed in the Central African Republic left the capital Bongi on Thursday as relations between the two countries remain tense. The Russians are just the latest in a long line of foreign forces to back the national military in its mission to retake 70% of the country from rebel control. There are estimated to be between six and 900 of these mercenaries here. I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves, therefore be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as dogs. So that really was a, a scripture that uh, really encouraged me when I took my visas to come here to the Central African Republic. We know that there's a lot of uh, unrest in the country with uh, the rebels always threatening to come in the country, but also the Wagner militia who are here supposedly to help uh, the country to defend against the rebels. But we know that they are known for many abuses in villages. And reading this scripture, God was reminding me that He is faithful, that He will take care of us. God is our protector, and who shall we fear if God is on our side? Amen. This is why we've been preparing so many months to come here, to go back to the pygmies, and uh, we're excited for what God is going to do in the midst of all the chaos. The day we arrived, there's been a bomb sent uh, to the embassy, Russian embassy. We can show you the news, we don't really understand what, what happened. The day we arrived, and me, I came in with a French passport, so I was afraid that uh, maybe they would suspect me because the day I arrived, the bomb is set. So there's many things that came to try to destabilize us as we prepare to, to go to the pygmies. But God is good and uh, we are nearly ready now. <laughs> Preparing our travel to the jungle for praise to the pygmies. Putting all the stuff, we have uh, a lot, maybe 200 kilos of soap, 200 kilos of salt, clothes, and all our things. So we're trying to play Tetris with the baggage. After two weeks of intense preparation in the capital Bangui, we are all set to journey into the heart of the jungle. We are determined to re-establish contact with the 12 tribes we had reached the previous year and extend our reach to five additional ones. Being well prepared was essential to succeed in such a challenging and remote environment. Nah, he's here, he came. We're ready to go. <laughs> As we left the bustling city behind us, we were filled with a mix of excitement and anticipation for what laid ahead of us. I'm so happy! There's a bit of uh, bumps on the road. Here is pretty good at least. But uh, more further ahead, there's no more, uh, uh, no more road. It's just the mud. So it's gonna be a really a bumpy ride. <laughs> a bumpy ride. It was so, so warm up there. I wish I was with you guys at the back having fun. <laughs> yeah. Thank you God for this adventure. We need to uh, really attach ourselves. There's a lot of wind. and chaos of the capital faded away, replaced by the serene beauty of the African landscape. 
But suddenly, a problem arose. God is with us. Yeah, you hear this noise? Screaking, we hear a screaking noise. C'est quoi ce bruit? The Ah, the problem with the brakes. When you are in Africa on your way to the jungle and you have a, a problem with the car, this is a big problem because help is very, very far. It's hours and hours away. So we are praying that we would be able to arrive before the night. We still have a long way to go. Still a long way to go, but we hope we will manage. And now I'm just taking care of everyone, feeding them bread that I made last night. It's so good. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Thankfully, we didn't have to wait so long. Okay, on the road again. We're driving, no problem. Okay. On the road again. Uh, it's making the, the noise again. We did already 50 kilometers and we still have 100 kilometers to go. Uh, but on this road, it's, it's, it really takes a long time because you see there's these holes like here. So it takes a long time and uh, it, it takes a lot of damage on the, on the car. Mary needs to pray. Yeah, I was praying right now. It's easy to get worried that God is in control. Amen. Well, they gave us a chair to sit. Wow, God provides. Thank you. Merci. Singila. I was just wondering where am I going to stay in the shade? And God provides. <laughs> Thank you. These people are so nice. They just gave oh, us a chair. They're like bringing this. another one. They want to bring another chair. They'll probably bring a third. Wow. Thank you. Well. She's waiting for a baby. <laughs> I need to find the soap to be there. Okay. Well, it's a little special, but it's good for the skin. It's good for the skin. So he told me that this got stuck inside of the brakes. That's why he would do this noise. So it should work. Yes, it should work. It should be good now. As we were on the side of the road, we saw big, big cars. That was the Russian, he told me. The Wagner uh, militia that come here. We hope that they will not uh, get in our way. Trust God. We are arriving where the, the road is uh, getting with big, big holes. We need to avoid them. We pray that the, the car will, will continue. We are going deeper and deeper in the jungle. Our relief and excitement grew as we maintained a swift and steady pace through the jungle towards the finish line, which now stood only a few kilometers away. We are arriving at the river. Yes, we made it. Yes, thank you, Lord. We did it. <laughs> to cross the river, we must now go on this moving platform, the only one of its kind in the region. <laughs> I can barely walk. Merci, Jésus, pour nous aller. We broke the wood of the baby bed a bit. It's, it's okay. okay. Thanks to God, we are here now. <laughs> What a beautiful, beautiful river. Wow. wow. And the, the car is in good condition. We didn't lose any of the suitcase, praise God. The Jean Baptiste. Jean 
So we are leaving this side by pulling a, a rope and we are going on the other side. Thank God we arrived before the night. We slowly but safely made our way across the river. We were now only a few hundred meters away from the village of Bagandu, our final destination. The finish line is so close. Due to the instability in the country, we have to go through numerous checkpoints along the way. It has happened in the past for officers to seek bribes by subjecting us to extensive questioning, making our already challenging and long journey even more demanding. If you suffer for good, you are happy. Yeah. Yeah. So that I say, I say thank you, God. We finally arrived at Francis. And Francis lived in the heart of the jungle and as we arrived, everybody was shouting and we were met by Francis, by his wife and all the children started to come and from so far to see us and it was, it was really like we never left. It was such a special feeling to see everyone once again. All the kids wanted to touch him. It got a bit overwhelming for him because he's not used to so many people. But by the end of it, he was playing in the dust and in the, in the, in the dirt with all the kids, so it's fine. Everyone helped us to unload the truck and uh, we then uh, set it our camp. Matthew started to play with all the kids and it was, he loves children and he was surrounded. It was a, it was a beautiful scene. And for the first time, he had a shower and, uh, with buckets <laughs> and uh, no, no shower and it was a new experience for him. And mm -hmm. So we were really tired after this long day of traveling and we went to bed to get ready for, for the next day. you can open the pygmy hearts today that they can receive your gospel Thank you. it's six in the morning and you see the sun is uh, rising up uh, at five very early today and we're getting ready to go to the pygmies very early because uh, they wake up and then they go in the forest so we need to catch them just in time before they go in the jungle hello hello team Sleep well. Uh, very good. <laughs> He's here. Hello, mes amis. Que Dieu vous bénisse. Et Lango John. So excited to go to the pygmy. Yeah, you will meet them again. I will meet them for the first time. It's so amazing. We can preach the gospel. We wasted no time and made our way back to the first pygmy tribe we had reached the previous year. Their village happens to be located within walking distance of where we were staying among the local Bantu people. Going to the pygmies, we can't go empty-handed because these people live in a poverty many people don't imagine. In the 21st century, they are still in a primitive state. Not speaking of running water, or electricity, a car, washing machine. No, they don't have these things, but they don't even have basic invention like the brick or the wheel or cattle. Livestock. Having, having livestock, having chickens. They do not have any of these. So they only are hunter-gatherers, they go for the day and find the food. The only thing they do possess is what they can find in the jungle. And as you know, you can't find in the jungle many things. And they sometimes barter with the local people for some clothes. As you can see, they have clothes, but it's not much. You can't just go and speak about Jesus to them, but be empty-handed. After walking only a few minutes through the jungle, we arrived to the tribe. Thankfully, they were all still gathered around the campfire. They were amazed to see we had come back, but this time with our small baby. They had never seen a white baby before. <laughs> Simon, 
Seeing Simon once again just brought so much joy to my heart because as you know, this, the life of pygmies is so hard and you don't know if they're going to live next day. Or... So one year later to see him again alive, it filled my heart with joy. And because God put on my heart that God wants to do something with Simon. Simon was tombé malade. Simon était malade, gravement malade. Mais si vous le voyez aujourd'hui, c'est la grâce de Dieu. Amen. Sinon, malade. vous aurez à entendre, euh, entendre quelque chose. Malade de quoi euh, Il avait la tuberculose, euh, oh. les parasites, il avait. Ça veut dire que beaucoup de choses là. Et Dieu t'a fait grâce. Oh. Amen. S'il est là, c'est la grâce. Amen. Amen. Dieu a une œuvre pour toi. Dieu veut t'utiliser. Il n'y a pas un amour, mais l'amour qui est là, ouais. Donc, il n'y a pas un courant, tout. Mon, 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 le soir, le soir, il prie, à minuit, il prie, le matin, il prie. Amen. Dieu, il entend tes prières. On est vraiment content de te revoir. Et ta famille va bien, ta famille Ah, ils sont là, la famille. Voilà. Merci. Ouais, ils ont grandi, les enfants, ouais. ils ont grandi. Babéki, Babéki, boit tout. Incroyable. <rire> Once seated among them, we asked about the other pygmies who had been baptized the previous year. To our astonishment, a few shared stories of divine provision, perseverance in prayer, and even dreams they had received from God. But as we expected, Simon informed us that some individuals had lost their zeal. This is why we were determined to revisit these tribes and provide them with the Word of God in their native language through solar-powered MP3 players, as we know that faith comes by hearing. It was important to lead Simon to also pray so that they see the power is not in us but in Jesus Christ. Maintenant, dans le nom de Jésus, tu quittes ce corps maintenant dans le nom de Jésus Christ. As we were led to pray for Simon, something remarkable happened. Tu le quittes esprit d'animal, esprit mauvais, esprit sauvage, on te chasse maintenant dans le nom de Jésus. Tu le quittes maintenant. Tu le quittes. Tu le quittes, tu le quittes. Tu le quittes. Tu le quittes maintenant. Tu... Merci maman. Moi je suis aussi. Bilingue. Tu vas me dire disons, il te rejette. Oh papa. Oh papa. Jésus. 
And he was crying and it was so beautiful to see the Holy Spirit came into him when he prayed for it. Ah. He filled him with his Holy Spirit in a way that all the tribe was in awe. A new child, he was really... Amen. Amen. <laughs> After seeing Simon's deliverance, the tribe members we hadn't seen last year were convicted to also follow Jesus. They realized that this Jesus we were talking about could do far beyond anything they had ever known, far more than all the jungle spirits they believed in. We told them that we would soon give Simon a solar-powered MP3 player for them to be able to know more about God and His will for their lives. This was the beginning of something very powerful because then Tongolo Simon started to follow us and he went with us on the different tribes to share his testimony. We went with him to a tribe on the other side of the river that knew Tongolo Simon as someone who was a bit depressed, living in different uh, addictions and smoking and all the different things and to see him and they saw the change in him. And it was more powerful than just us coming with a message because he is a message, his life is a message. And it was so powerful to hear. Yes, he spoke with so much authority when he would help Timo baptize people and yeah. pray for the sick. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It's like he did this all his life. Yeah, at some point we were in the waters and and I was telling him, okay, so lead these this, the pygmies to be sure to understand they really understand what they're doing, why, why are they doing this? And he just started to discuss with them and he was so confident, he was so... Like he did this many times and I was amazed like at this. What shocked me the most is at some point he was speaking with a, a pygmy and he looked at me and he said, no, he's not, he's not ready, he's not ready. So that I was like, whoa, he understood that following Jesus is a matter of the heart. It's not about just answering questions. Or, and that's when I, I said, thank you, Lord. This was why we came. We came for this. We came for pygmy leaders to, to rise. Amen. And God did it. Not only did God purpose Simon, but a handful of other men. As we visited each tribe, the Holy Spirit confirmed our choice of every leader. We would all be in agreement on our choice to find faithful men who will have the responsibility to share the Word of God with these MP3 players. We then invited all the tribes to see the Jesus movie close to where we stayed. It was their first time they watched a movie. Some even walked six hours to see it. <laughs> Listening to the actors speaking Aka fluently brought the message of Jesus much closer to their hearts. They were in awe by what they were seeing, but also frightened when they saw the snake. They will never forget the sacrifice of Jesus crucified on the cross. Bantus and Pygmies would attend our movie nights. We would also take the opportunity to condemn the discrimination the Pygmies are so often victims of. 
Because of their small height, some of the local black people exploit them, like they make them do petty work for them and go and find food for the day for them. And some of them even go through famine because they take their food and that's really sad to well, see. They are not paid, they pay them with drugs or with, yeah. don't pay them with anything. So many of them, yes, do experience famine. It was so heartbreaking and this is something we tried to break. We tried to break this racism between these two uh, people group because it's not about color. They have the same color, but now it's about height. And many of the locals were shocked to see me, to see us walking around with pygmies through the village and talking with them like they are normal individuals. Mm -hmm. They really uh, didn't understand that because in their head, uh, they, they, they don't value them as their equals. So that really we try to fight against this and uh, that really to show them that God is not happy with this. And if they consider themselves believers, these locals, they shouldn't marginalize the pygmies. <laughs> Thankfully, there were Bantu brothers who cared for the pygmies. They accompanied us from tribe to tribe and even helped us to translate entire portions of the Bible into Aka, the pygmy language. Since the pygmies do not read or write, it was vital to translate the Bible into an audio form so we could give each tribe a solar-powered MP3 player that they can listen to even if they do not have electricity. This task was very time-consuming as we were making sure that nothing was lost in the translation. We worked on this as a team from sunrise to sunset and when the translation was finally completed, we felt a sense of relief. We knew this will have a profound and lasting impact in these tribes even after we will have left. After months of planning and preparation, the Word of God was finally ready to be placed in the hands and hearts of each one of these tribes. The disciples from each tribe that we had chosen all came. It was a precious time of fellowship in Christ where everyone shared with gratitude and excitement what the Lord had done for them. After eating, the moment they had all been waiting for finally arrived. We presented them with the Word of God in their own language, serving as a bridge for them between heaven and earth. As they listened, their hearts were touched and their spirits were lifted by the words of eternal life which they could finally hear and share with their family and friends. Most of them had never used an electronic device before, so it took a bit of time to explain to them how to use it. Thankfully, because of their hunger and determination, they all knew how to use it after a few hours. They were all now ready to go back to their tribes with a mission to gather them regularly to listen to the Word of God and to grow in their faith.
As we were preparing to leave for SCAD, our next destination, we were invited to a house where they asked us to call the baby uh, that just got born yesterday to call her a new name. What an honor. <laughs> Merci Jésus, tu l'as béni Seigneur et tu la protèges Seigneur de tout mal. So I call her without surprise Mary after my dear wife because it's a beautiful name and uh, I know she's gonna have a beautiful life with this name. So it's really special, we were not expecting this, we were just preparing to go to a uh, to move to our next location and this man just came this morning to uh, to call his his daughter that just got born yesterday so it's beautiful mm. <laughs> it's so beautiful what an honor for little mary bravo bravo merci amen que dieu la bénisse merci merci I'm a child of God, I'm a child of God. My name is written in the book of life. Yeah, 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 yeah. My name is written in the book of life. Hey, goodbye. Now heaven is my home. Heaven is my home. It's amazing! The grace of Lord is with us! Thank you, my Lord, for all this adventure, for your name, the name, the duty name of Jesus Christ! There's nothing like it. When you go and work for God, there's nothing that can fulfill you more than to see people with joy. It's so beautiful. Mary had a vision a few days ago about all of the pygmy tribes going to heaven, meeting the Lord Jesus Christ, and it was so touching. And she was crying when she saw this vision of all the tribes entering heaven and being saved. I, I, I'm seeing every, everything that God to do the mir is a miracle in the life of the many people. So that is good for me for this uh, adventure in Bagandu. Uh, adventure in Bagandu. It's a miracle. We continue to I can write all things Jesus done for us. I can't write that. I, I love when the uh, old child of the village come came and sh and uh, sing. Uh, like, like God sent uh, an army of angels for us to encourage us to continue this mission for Him. It was amazing. <laughs> I remember the first time we met with Matthew, we didn't know each other and I knocked at his door, I was with a friend and he opened <laughs> the door and there was drugs, smoke everywhere and he was with very violent people. We was uh, speaking about uh, uh, create a mafia in front of us. <laughs> we told them to repent and to change their life. He told me that. Uh, I had no, understand nothing about God. I was in the lie of the devil. He told me uh, what uh, such hard things that I had to help. And uh, to my friends, uh, he, he told the same thing. He was like in the truth. And when I saw him spoke, this guy was really a son of God. He, he don't care about nothing. He had not a friend a lot to say what he has saying in my eyes, in my house. Every guy I know can kill him, but he says the truth. It was like, wow, okay, that's so good. That's what I'm searching for. He started to follow God, to become a disciple of Christ. He got baptized, he became born again, and uh, his life changed. He was ready to leave everything for Christ, and he did. He left everything and came with us to Africa. 
and we couldn't help to feel so amazed to see how God can use it, God can change someone and how so many uh, pygmies around him was changed around him and it was incredible. It's a tribe we went to. It's a tribe we went to uh, last week where we, we trained three of, the, of them to have the word of God. We gave them the word of God. So dangerous! I'm Yo. still alive! Thank you, my lord! <laughs> there was a hole, eh? There was a hole. He's sleeping through the storm. For baby, it was really easy for him. <laughs> it was me that worried for him more than he worried. <laughs> it was like Jesus sleeping in the boat when all the disciples were worried about the storm and he was, like right now, he was so peaceful and sleeping while we're going in bumps and jumping in the car. And mm. <laughs> yeah, he really taught me to be like a child and what it means to be like a child. He didn't worry if I would take care of him or not. He just trusted me. And same with us, we should just trust the Father that he's always with us. Amen. As we delved deeper and deeper into the jungle, little did we know that we were about to face a giant obstacle. There's a tree on the road. There's a tree on the road. We're really blocked now. We need to take the machete. We had traveled so far and going back now was not an option. So I grabbed my machete as it was the only solution at our disposal. We're gonna make it, my boy. We're gonna make it, yes. <laughs> this huge tree that was uh, absolutely huge fell <laughs> on the middle of the road. We're trying to pass through here with the with the car. that uh, the machete does not break because if it breaks we do with the teeth <laughs> okay. <laughs> Cornell, our driver, was relentlessly hacking away despite the heat and humidity. He was like a lion, unafraid and determined to clear the path ahead. We are nearly at the end. We are nearly there after uh, 30 minutes. Oh yes, yes, the machete is still alive, we're ready to go. We're gonna make it. We 
hope we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna make it tonight before the night. Everything is in God's hand. Very quickly, we realized we had not finished facing obstacles. To the tree. Go back and back again. Another tree. <laughs> So we can't go there, we can only go here. Thankfully, when we arrived, a group of pygmies were already there clearing the way. As we were trying to help our pygmy friends, Matthew hurt himself. He opened himself with the machete. Ay, 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 ay. Ay, 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 ay. Ay, ay, ay. On a les marques. One, two, three, four. Being only lightly injured, Matthew continued the effort until the road was cleared. Yes! The road is now clear. These obstacles had been a test of our perseverance. Now we had passed, we continued on our journey, ready for more challenges ahead. Merci! Merci! We are... We are at the river. We are at the river, c'est mon pont préféré. We are at the river. We arrived! With many new friends! Ooh. Everyone wants to see the baby! Many have asked us how it is to live in Africa, and many have expressed their desire to also come here. It is definitely a humbling and life-changing experience. But before you book your tickets, we want to show you a glimpse of what life is like here in Africa. Hi everyone! Welcome to our home. This is where we wash our hands because there's no running water, of course. I don't want to waste it because it's so precious. <laughs> yeah, so we feel it once every two days. Of course, we don't have any lights. We don't have, I mean, electricity. And this is our room. We have a mosquito net, a double bed. Really, really thankful for that. Mm -hmm. Hello, baby. Hello. Hello, Jean-Baptiste. Yes, you like it here. Hey. His bed is beside him. Yeah. The mosquito net. That's his bed with mosquito net. We have a little window. And this is where we hang our clothes. And this is our portable toilet because uh, here uh, we don't go to the toilet at night because it's crawling with uh, cockroaches. cockroaches so. Everywhere. I'm scared of them. So. so Mary, she was like, I can't go there at <laughs> night. And, uh, and even me, it's true that I don't really like cockroaches. <laughs> but we are, we are really thankful. We're really, uh, because we, like I said, we have much more than local Africans here. We really thank Francis who received us here and uh, helped us in the mission. 
got the pygmy tribes that are not so far. They are a few, uh, 10 to 15, 20 uh, miles away from here. So mm -hmm. this is such a, a blessing from yeah. God. Here is the salt we have. We have one of these bags for each tribe we go and visit. So we have quite a lot of that. Here we have a lot of the soaps that we made with a dear widow called Valerie. She showed us how to make the traditional African soap. Amen. This is one per family, so we can do a lot of families here. We're traveling back in time. We're washing our clothes by hand. I love the lifestyle that the women over there have. It's so simple. But of course, it's hard on the other hand because they work so much with their hands. They have huge hands, the women, because they wash their laundry by hand. But me, I'm so frail and it would take me hours to do our laundry. Yeah, you even wash in the river or the clothes. Sometimes when we had to baptize people, Mary would wash her clothes in the river. Strapped to the baby on my back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We cannot truly understand the African lifestyle without talking about their traditional food. This white powder you see them preparing is gozo gozo, known as cassava. It can be found on practically all of the African continent. This humble ingredient is staple for all Central Africans, eating it for breakfast, lunch and dinner. Yes, please. So how is it? Mm, it's nice. It's It basically tastes like flour with water, but a bit fermented. It's so nice. You feel so full after you don't eat anything else. We have plantains, our favorite. In the African countryside, gas cannot be found. Here, every meal is a product of wood fire and patience. In this country, we can also find a never-ending supply of wild passion fruits. Mm, so now let us show you how we travel from tribe to tribe. When we go to the tribes, we use motorbikes. They are very fast through the jungle because we did the mistakes last year to take a, We went with a car and it was absolutely... Horrific. Crazy. <laughs> That's absolutely crazy and dangerous. A window exploded and uh, we, we broke the, the... Yeah, it was it was incredible. We got a punch in the middle of the jungle with no uh, assistance to help us. So it's better to go by motorbike. But even with motorbikes in the jungle, problems can arise. So we have to walk to the tribe. We have a puncher on the way. The others are behind, they are coming. So we're gonna walk to the tribe. Nothing is gonna stop us. Yes, just a bit of morning exercise. It won't hurt us. <laughs> we don't have gas anymore, so uh, we're waiting <laughs> for them to go and get the, the gas. And then we can cross the river with the boat. Uh. During the rainy season, it is also not uncommon to see entire bridges taken away by the force of the current. The road stops here. We're gonna go on these planks and continue by walk. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be all right, all right. <laughs> so it's not that far. Hello. Most of the pygmies recognized us from the year before, but now seeing us with a baby, it's like, yeah. wow, things changed. And, and they brought their baby now, they consider us as their family. And... Yes. That's really why we wanted also to bring the baby because these are tribes that we already reached uh, last year. 
So this time to bring our baby was to show them how much we appreciate them and how much we want them to see how much we love them. And they were so happy to see the continuation of our life. It really created the bond between us to show them that we are just like them, we have children and we sacrificed everything and we came to them with our small little baby. It really meant more than words, it really opened their hearts. To the he message. was only five months old, so he was very small. Yeah, they were like, wow. even then they were shocked that we would bring their, our, our baby there. Yes. And look at him. He's happy. He's it's in good health. Oui, oui, ça va bien. Ça va. Oui, oui. Bébé, bébé, bonjour. Eh, bébé. Oui. Ah, oui, voilà. Oui, ça va. Oui, oui. Eh, le bébé, bonjour. Eh, le bébé, bonjour. Ça va. They really value children there. It's, it's beautiful. You know, we really must learn this from them as Westerners. Mm. It was unbelievable what the Lord was doing with the pygmies. Coming out of the baptism, some were saying, I saw a light. Others were saying, I saw a white man coming to me. We wanted to see what they were seeing. <laughs> we were not seeing what they were seeing, <laughs> but we were like so happy that God was confirming the word we were speaking to them, showing them He is real, showing them He cares about them. That it's not just these white people speaking mm. about this God, but it started to become so real to them. I remember one said that he was sleeping in his heart. He, he heard a voice saying to him, this is my way now, continue walking on this way. Do not go back to your old life. He thought someone was speaking to him and we, we explained to him, no, this is God speaking to him. This is Jesus we spoke to you about. It really strengthened their faith. <laughs> This is Samadhi, one of the disciples who was baptized last year. After leaving animism, he became a strong disciple of Jesus Christ. And to our surprise, he even embarked on a two-day journey by foot to come to SCAD to receive the Word of God on the MP3 player. His voice as a beacon of light united the entire tribe and throughout the jungle echoed the praises of Jesus Christ. The unexpected happened. We were called by the police. Uh, we didn't expect this, but they told us to come as soon as possible to the close, closest police station. And they told us to pack all our things. So this is when I came to Mary and I told her, we need to pack all our things. We are called by the police. Mm. We're packing all our things. And uh, we have a mattress, we have a baby bed. We're getting ready to, uh, we don't know where we're gonna sleep tonight. That baby is ready for it. Mama, how are you? I'm good. I'm a bit nervous. It's okay. I'm a bit nervous. A bit nervous, but God, it's in God's hands. We have to take all our things. The salt, the soap. We have to pack everything to go. There were still two things we had prepared the next day. The first thing was to have the leadership meeting with all the different leaders of the different tribes to show them how to use the MP3 player in their own language. And the other thing was to show the Jesus movie in Akka to the tribes. We promised all the tribes to gather in one place, in one tribe where we show, would show this movie. Yeah. So hopefully we gave this task to Wilfred just before leaving. We showed him how it all works, how to, to do it so he can continue the mission without us. And he was, he was so faithful to that and we thank the Lord really. Yes, he did everything how, 
how it was planned. Yes, and this we couldn't have suffered to live without the mission being fulfilled. As for us, uh, we continued the uh, our way we arrived at the police station where they started to interrogate us. So they interrogated uh, me and uh, asked me what I was doing and uh, maybe I came here for a military operation secret, espionage. So I said uh, no and I told them the truth and only the truth. And uh, we're waiting. Now it's Matthews being interrogated and we're gonna see uh, what happens. I'm next. And Mary's gonna be next. What about you? Did you commit any crimes? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. My flesh was like afraid a lot. Oh my God, we, we die. They will torture us. They will hurt us. But I knew the word of God. God say, don't be afraid of anything. Everything is, is in my hand. So it was like, no, we will pray. And we will say, thank you, my Lord, because we was judged. Uh, worthy. Worthy, thank you. Very quickly they started to accuse us of many things, uh, that we were here for gold, for diamonds. and yeah. But we showed them, you know, the documentaries we made in the past of Sodom and Gomorrah, of Mount Sinai, that we showed them the baptisms of prisoners. And some we really saw that we were here for God, we were not here to, to do any of this. And, uh, but still, they, they received orders from higher authorities and we were sent back to, uh, to the capital. And this is when it got really scary because uh, they asked for my computer and uh, me, I said, I have nothing to hide. Here's my computer, here's the password. And then we saw uh, two young men with my computer. They were not dressed in uniform and, and I was actually hanging the clothes outside and I saw these, these two young men with my computer going in the van of the Wagner militia. Uh, a Wagner, we recognize them because they are hiding their face all the time during their time there. And this is when I went to Mary and uh, I told them they have my computer. They could put anything on my computer. They could put drone footage of their military bases and accuse us of being their true spies, being there for espionage. All I could think about was trusting God, because if you're in the hands of the Wagner, it doesn't go well. Yeah, there's nothing you can do. You can't discuss with such people, explain you're here for God. They don't care about God. So this morning I woke up uh, at 3 in the morning. I realized that uh, they are probably adding uh, footage on our computer. We don't know what they are doing. We're waiting to see what is going to happen with us. We had all our... We've been interrogated uh, two times now, each of us, to see that what we say is true and that we're real missionaries. And uh, I think it's gonna be okay. Wanna cry? No, I don't wanna cry. <laughs> I don't wanna cry. God is with us. <laughs> it's good, I like it, because the prison, not the prisoners, but the police, they put on music and they, we cook together. And it's a good time. Yes. We got good food, got to take care of us. So the French embassy came and they gave us so much food for this. For the next day, this is for one day. We're so excited, guys. We're so excited. They come every day and then bring us French cuisine at its best. <laughs> we chef. Cakes, yes, we chef. Yum, yum, yum. So tasty. So we were there for four days now at the, the detention, waiting, the time was long, the days were going by, we were interrogating, called back to, for more questions, we gave the same answers, and we had to be patient. We really were tested during that time. Uh, they wanted to see, you know, if we were real, if we were fake, so we had to be calm. When they were accusing us of many things, we had to stay calm and just repeat the same truth over and over. Why are we here? And after four days, what happened? The French ambassador came with good news that me and, and the baby can go home to the place we rented in the capital. But it was really sad because I had to leave Timo for the first time since we got married. Yeah, it was not easy for me mm -hmm. to, uh, to leave Mary and the baby because not just living for a few days, we don't know when we will reunite. So it was really a test of faith for me. 
uh, when will I see my son, my wife again? We don't know. There was uh, the, the ambassador told us the reality, the reality that the French uh, citizen took 16 months in prison in the same country for the same accusation, which mm -hmm. are espionage. So we know that there was a real risk that I could stay here uh, with Matthew. Even here in detention, there were souls thirsting to hear the gospel. Hopefully the French ambassador came once again with good news that he managed to negotiate with the Central African authorities to let us go on the next flight out of the country to France before things get into judicial court or he said you need to get out as soon as possible to take a ticket right now at all costs. This is what we done and they even allowed me uh, to go back to join Mary. That was unexpected. Yeah, I that thought was someone unexpected. broken. I thought it was a Wagner coming to get me. Yeah, so I, I entered the, the house and said hello to Mary and she was so shocked she didn't expect me. <laughs> she didn't expect to see me that soon, you know, it was only three days. We didn't know if it was going to be weeks so. or... And I told her the good news that we were able to fly out of the country. So it was okay. such a special moment for us. We thanked the Lord, we felt so happy. Bye bye. We are reunited and we are back where the adventure started, where we were wondering what is gonna be ahead, dangers lying ahead. The partner group. And we went through it together and and uh, here we are now, we can testify that God is faithful and uh, He brought us through the, the valley of death. We are alive, we are together, we shouldn't fear any evil. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's so nice to be back together now. So we are preparing our suitcases and we are leaving tomorrow back to France. Next day we were in the car on our way to the airport and as you know we, we don't know if things are going to work out until the end. Uh, so we were praying all our way to the airport and they stamp our passports. And we said goodbye to the French ambassador. We said God bless you sir, really God used you. Uh, you can't imagine how and we, we will always be thankful for you. And, and here we were on the tarmac, going to the plane and, and with this sense of freedom, like well, yeah. we, we are together as a family, mm -hmm. we, are, we are going back home. But quickly, as we were looking out of, of the airplane, we, we saw the jungle and we were reminding the people we are leaving behind, all our friends, all the people we baptized, the, the pygmies that we, we loved and we couldn't say goodbye to them. And, so it was a mixed feeling. On one hand, we, we knew we were free, but on the other hand, we are thinking about them. Yes. It's not the first time we went there. It's now the third time, and we know that there's people we trust now, that we know and that we continue the work. And the only thing we can do now is to stay in contact with, uh, with these people from afar and pray, pray for these people. And we really believe that what happened to us is for God to show us that there's a new horizon. Yeah. They have the word of God in their own language. They have been trained. They have been baptized. They see the hand of God. They receive dreams, visions. And maybe it's now time to go to new tribes as there are thousands of pygmies, not just in Central Africa, but in many other countries. And as you see, we are doing this testimony here from a jungle. But this is not the African jungle. As we are talking, we are right now in the Amazon rainforest. So this is really to show you that the work of God does not stop. It's not because there's uh, things trying to stop us, hard times, we went in detention, that we wanted to give up everything. No, as we are talking right now, we are continuing the work of God here in the Amazon. Many people are giving their life to Christ mm -hmm. also. And we hope to go back to Africa oh, soon hope. and to go back to our pygmy friends. But that's it for now. We, uh, we want to leave you with this encouragement. Do not, do not let anything stop you from following Jesus Christ. Do not let anything hinder you to follow, to do His will. The time is short. The time is short and there's nothing else you can do right now. 
with your life than to serve the Lord with all your heart. Amen. So God bless you all out there. God bless you all out there. And uh, see you maybe somewhere in the world. In the labor field. Yeah, see you in the labor field. <laughs> God bless you.